Hello, and thank you so much for taking the time out to listen. Today, I titled this message, Successful with God, Not Successful with Men. Successful with God, Not Successful with Men. So there are those individuals who are all over the place talking about how successful you're going to be when it comes to making thousands and thousands of dollars, how successful you're going to be when it comes to buying up this property and that one. They're always telling you how they how you can get this and how you can get that, right? Then when you start projects or when you get associated with different people, you find out that you're not as successful and the chances are you're never going to be successful with that particular group, organization, product or service. I can hear someone say, oh, no, don't ever say never uh, because yeah, because that is the key because because why? Why is someone never going to be successful in a certain industry, organization, what have you? Because there are always going to be requirements. I can't stress that enough. There will always be requirements. This is why we do our children a disservice when we tell them that they can be anything and everything. Because if the requirement says that you have to be this tall, this wide, this strong, this whatever, your child is not going to be a success. If we want a certain culture in this particular film and we want and we want these people to look this way or that way and your child doesn't look this way, that way and is not a part of that culture, why would we want that child in our film? OK, requirements. And some of you all, you got to experience this sort of thing when you interviewed. You sat down, you interviewed with individuals and you found out that the job was not a fit. So what happened to this whole, I could be everything and anything. Our society quickly, and I do mean quickly, when you start putting resumes out, tell you, you can't be, okay? You can't be. And this is what I love about serving the Lord because he's so honest. He's so straightforward. And this is why some people run away from God and God's people because they don't want honesty, they don't want someone to rain on their parade after they've been psychologically manipulated, abused, used, and told that they could be everything only to find out that they're going to be nothing if they keep on listening to liars, deceivers, users, abusers, okay? Because that's ultimately what the devil does. He builds you up and then breaks you down. Come on. Many celebrity knows this. We were the ones who told you that you were the best singer, but you're not. And we were the ones who told you that you had all of these fans who loved you. However, we never showed you all the fans who can't stand you. And we were the ones who told you that you can make all of this money. But the truth of the matter is, is that your music or your art or whatever didn't make all of this money. What made this money was, and then, you know, they tell you whatever made the money. We found out that some folks in the entertainment world, they're, they're, they have double roles. Some of them are agents. They go into other countries and they do all sorts of things, you know, and then they come back and they bring information to certain organizations and those organizations end up going in and they have some information on this elitist and that elitist and this way they've got the upper hand on an enemy. We found out that some individuals, they are more than singers, dancers, actresses, and what have you. Some of them are just high paid call girls, <laughs> prostitutes, if you will. Okay. And it doesn't matter how you decorate something up. A person who is real plain speaking, got good old fashioned common sense says, Oh, I see a whore for what a whore is. Okay. Thank you. So right now she's just pretty much walking the corner like back in the day, except she does it through her music videos. Okay. Got it. Mm hmm. You see, <laughs> the devil has the same old plans. He just uses different ways to make it more digestible, more appeasable. But it's the same thing. Sexual immorality is always going to be sexual, sexual immorality, no matter how much you decorate it up. You see. And so to be successful at sexual immorality, you've got to do a lot of sexually immoral things. But in God's eyes, spiritually, you're not successful. You're not. 
For some of you others, you know that you're not very successful because the numbers, the data has said that you're not successful. And it hurts on the inside because no matter how much you said, I wish, I wish, no matter how much you affirmed or put it out there, you're still what you are until you get necessary resources, skills, until you get teachers involved. And then even then you might not still be as good as, and some of you all learn that 30, 50, 80, some thousand dollars later in debt and some a hundred and some thousand dollars in debt from all the schooling you see. So Lord, I want to be a success. Someone says, the Lord says, well, what kind of success do you want to be? I don't know. You don't know. No. I mean, you, you were able to answer that question when it came down to sales and customer service and real estate. And you were able to say that when it came to the medical industry and okay, so what kind of spiritual success would you like to be? I don't know. You tell me good. That's exactly where I want you to be. That's exactly where I want you to be. That's the mindset that God is calling right now for some of you all who are teachers of the word. Okay. He's not calling people who he already got them. Okay. So you don't need to call me because God already got me. Right. You listen to the spiritual messages. You see the scriptures, you know, that I've been at this thing for a long time. Right. In terms of talking, writing books, all this other stuff. God already got me. Your job as a believer is to go out there and spend your time commenting, sharing, liking, subscribing, or whatever else to someone who they don't know that there is success just yet, but God's about to show them. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> Hallelujah. Because we're winning souls to Christ for the pure intent for them to be spiritually successful, not worldly successful. If you're listening to this channel and you have been listening to this channel for quite some time, you are spiritually successful. You are richer in spirit more than most people. That means that when you go into the store or when you're riding in the car or when you're sit seated in the courtroom or you're over there at the game or you're down there over at mama and them's house, chances are, you are more successful than most people around you because you have sought God for wisdom. And I'm one of those wisdom teachers. I'm like, except with a twist, I'm like that girlfriend who tells you the truth about your ugly self. The truth that other people wouldn't tell you. The truth that you wouldn't let other people tell you because you don't tell them everything. Which for some of you all, if you want to be spiritually successful, you got to start with admitting your faults. There's too much cover up secrecy. There's too much. This is my business. I don't want to tell my business because so-and-so going to tell my business and all this other stuff. Your business isn't that important. I'm sorry. <laughs> I've had individuals brainwash folks in the family about this sort of thing. Trust me. There's nothing that is so important about you that I'm going to write an entire book about. I've already done that. <laughs> and that was my tell me mother, you're sorry book. Oh, and my other book, say goodbye to dad, because I told so much business when it comes to the psychology of the narcissistic controlling mothers and fathers to the point where Satan hated and continues to hate and I really don't care because if you call yourself a successful mother, successful father, then prove it. <laughs> and we're not talking about money. I want to see where you are spiritually. God says, this is my child and my child was gifted a child who's now an adult son or daughter. And they're failing miserably at it because all they can teach them is the same old, same old that their predecessors taught them, which was sexual and moral, which was sexual and more uh, sexual and more being sexually immoral, being a liar, a deceiver, being a drunkard, being a hater. Can we go on? And off that one goes, click off the message. You see, 
every time we get to a place where we're that close to the truth with someone, there's some other person out there who says, no, that's not the way towards success. No, 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 no. Let's pull out the Bible and let, well, not everybody wants to read a Bible. So how are you going to reach that person? Huh? God has moved on your spirit to talk to somebody. Just simply have a conversation. Can you be able to do it without using scripture? Can they see something about you, feel something about you where they want to stay in your presence? Someone says, well, I'm not quite sure how to go about getting that. That comes through Holy Spirit. According to the book of Acts, the Holy Spirit that Jesus left behind before he ascended unto heaven. You've got to allow for the Holy Spirit to move on your spirit, to speak to someone, to usher them toward their spiritual calling. Therefore, them becoming a spiritual success. You got that right. I can't be a spiritual success if I got all these people in my ear telling me, give her the scripture, give her the scripture. And meanwhile, she was abused by the minister. Now, you got any bright ideas? Exactly. You don't. Holy Spirit. Oh, Heavenly Father. Hallelujah. Glory be. Well, you could talk this way and that way. Hallelujah. I'm going to let God use me a mere vessel. Okay. We don't just allow God to use us when we feel like it or when the church tells us that you're only allowed to let God use you for these particular subject matters, but not these. You see, the reason why for some individuals, they have this sort of thing out here, rules, requirements, and so forth is because there are those who are not spiritually mature enough to be able to communicate with people in a way to make them spiritually successful. So their concern is, is that you're going to make spiritual failures because you don't know how to talk right. Ooh. Or you don't know how to share, you know, in a way that's loving and compassionate and kind. Well, that's not the audience that I'm targeting. The audience that I'm targeting are people who tend to be the sassy, the disrespectful, the evil, the rude, the arrogant. And then some of them on a good day can be quite nice. Yes, but that's what select people. But then at home, you cussing and fussing and acting up. So if you tend to be that way sometime, then you definitely need to continue to listen. (laughs) <laughs> because we got plenty of folks who they tell you you got to get right and get cleaned up before you can even be on this channel before you could even be a part of this church but that's not who God's after he's uh, he's after the one who right now you got your share issues <laughs> and you thought some things and you've done some things that you're not proud of So you want to be spiritually successful so that you can then become what? Worldly successful. (laughs) And then we start to question that too, because worldly success at some point, what happens in worldly success? Some of you all know. (laughs) You end up making a deal with the devil, don't you? You get that worldly success up to a certain point, And then you get that crossroads that shows up where, okay, what are you willing to do for a Klondike bar? <laughs> what would you do? What would you do for a Klondike bar? That used to be an old slogan in a commercial for None other than the frozen dessert Klondike bars, which had chocolate on the outside and vanilla ice cream on the inside. And so there are all sorts of individuals that when it comes down to money, what are they willing to do for money? What aren't you? What are you not going to do for money? You see, What you are not going to do for money is spiritually successful because you're raising a standard for yourself as well as those around you. We can make all this money if we tell this lie. Uh uh. We can make all this money if we use a black hat method. No. We can make all this money if you would just. No. No. What won't you do? 
To be spiritually successful, first of all, requires God. Second, it requires faithfulness to God, not to everybody and everything. Satanic being, satanic support, satanic whatever, uh uh-uh. To be spiritually successful also means that you're going to be hated just like Jesus. And that you may not get that life that you always wanted until you pass away. And you're on the other side with God. To be spiritually successful means that at some point your family is going to forsake you. They're going to forget all about you. They're going to mark you. They're going to tell other people about you. They're flying monkeys. Okay. You're not going to be able to win everybody. But you are going to win those that God has called you to. Not what you want, but what God wants. To be spiritually successful, we all have a spiritual calling on our lives. Some of us already know that's what I've been doing for all these years, listening. Uh, if, when you're listening to this uh, audio message and other messages on here, each one of these is its own divine calling. Okay. And then, of course, the channel itself, the books, the books that you have seen. Oh, this one, she was just writing it because this, that, and the other. No, God had put these things in my spirit a long time ago, long time ago. Matter of fact, I was eight years old when my mother had spoke to me and told me, don't write a book about motherhood, about me specifically. And then the Lord spoke to me and told me, he said that not only will you write a book about mothers, but you will use examples in that book related to your own personal experiences with your mother and your grandmother. Why would the enemy put that in her spirit when I was just a little kid? Because the enemy, just like God at times, knows some things about you. Okay, God always knows something about us. But when I say at times, I'm referring to those times where you might not even know. Like I was only a child, so I didn't know. But God, he knew. And the enemy at times shows up to throw you off track. It's not all the time. It's at times. And then at times God shows up in your life to tell you what your spiritual calling is. And when you pour shit away or you allow distraction to pour shit away, then you don't walk in your divine calling like you're supposed to. So then you get set back. And I said, I refuse to let the enemy show up again and tell me what I'm not supposed to do. And when I talked to her about tell me, mother, you're sorry. I told her, I said, mom, I said that you and my, you and grandma, you're a muse, but the book isn't about you all, but it is a reference guide. So it's not one of those, you know, tell all books or something like that, but it is to help individuals who might be going through their share of struggles. And she said, Oh, okay. And she pretty much went on about her business on that one and started talking about something else. She read when mothers cry and she said she wished that when mothers cry had been around when she was a young mother. You see, there are those things in this life that we have to really speak to the Lord about. And some of those things may not align with his will. Like, for instance, the whole business of being this future singer, dancer, and actress long before book writing. The Lord had used my dad to speak to me to say, no, the, the market pretty much saturated, right? We got enough black singers, dancers, actresses, entertainers. We got enough of that. Okay. And so that aligned with God's will. But at that particular time, what we didn't have enough of was black journalists and so you're talking about late 80s going into the 90s. For some of you all, you are at a place in your life where you want to be spiritually successful. You don't know how to get there, but I did go over what it takes. So now that you know what it takes, you've got to fight to be the spiritual success that God wants you to be. And that in that 
requires prayer. Asking the Lord, what is his will? Asking the Lord, what is your divine purpose, your calling? And then after you've asked, you get up and you continue on about your day. And at some point, the Lord is going to speak to you or there's going to be a phone call or there's going to be an email or there's going to be someone who shows up in your life. And the next thing you know, you're going to feel in your spirit that where I used to be is not who I used to be. And therefore, I am going to walk in who I now am. And I'm going to do the things that I am called to do now. Because at some point, you're going to recognize that life is going by very rapidly and you don't have a lot of time to be sitting up there twiddling your thumbs and being around people who are going to distract you from your calling. And so the cutting cutting away and the cutting off is what takes place for so many. So be prepared for it. And all of your traditions that you're accustomed to and what the family does, that's going to be challenged. And at some point, those are going to be irrelevant. And then in time, you're going to find that in order to walk a mile with the Lord, you got to be physically fit. And so your mind, your body is going to be challenged. And at some point, you're going to tell yourself, I need to lose the weight. I need to eat healthier. And not only are you going to just say that, but you're going to actually do it. And you may fail quite a few times before you actually stick to something. Because this requires work and we can't have people sitting around all day, every day in front of a device. Part of that work is sitting quiet, which is a challenge for many individuals. If you can sit quiet for five minutes, kudos to you. If you can sit quiet for 15 minutes, Excellent. If you can sit quiet for 30 minutes, awesome. If you can sit quiet for an hour, oh my goodness, I know God is talking to you at some point. And if you can sit quiet for two hours uninterrupted, (laughs) is it almost time for you to go home (laughs) to be with Jesus? You better work (laughs) like never before because God's giving you that time. He's giving you that time. And if you can go past two hours and you're in three and four and five hours plus with a lot of free time on your hands, you definitely know that it won't be long now. And that's all the more reason why you want to be spiritually successful and forget some worldly success. (laughs) God gave me all this time. I know I'm going to use my time the way God wants me to. Hallelujah. And I'm going to find every way to make some money to take care of all this other worldly stuff in a way where I'm still going to be present with the one true God. And then the other stuff can just go on on autopilot because I got to be with the one true God. I got to be in the spiritual realm. I got to be about God's business. I hear somebody now (laughs) talking like that. And so we take this moment right now to pray for those individuals who are seeking you like never before, who want to be spiritually successful in mind, body and spirit. We're asking, Lord Jesus, that you continue to ordain them, appoint them, anoint them, guide them wherever they're supposed to be. Talk to whoever they're supposed to talk to in order to get your needs met. We pray these things in Jesus mighty name. May they continue to have the passion, the fervor, the bravery, Lord Jesus, the angels of protection encamped all around them. As they fulfill your will, just as Jesus was appointed, your son called to fulfill your mission in Jesus name. Yes. And God does this sort of thing time and time again. As I prayed that prayer, the room got a little bit brighter. (laughs) The clouds kind of moved out the way a little bit. So it's amazing. It's amazing. God signs his visions, his wonders, and you will see that along the way towards your spiritual success. Well, I'm excited for you. I know that God is going to just move on your spirit. Do take the time out to draw near to him. Have your pen and paper out or the notes on your phone. Get ready to jot some things that come to mind. Not everything, of course, that comes to your mind is going to be something that is God ordained or appointed or anointed. However, though, it does give you that opportunity to purge out some things, reread them and go, "Mm, I don't think so, especially if it doesn't align with God's will. And then of course, it will free up your mind to put down what it is that God wants you to do.
And of course, God always provides confirmation through his people, as well as through his signs, visions, and wonders. And if you need people to pray for you, always, always seek out local believers, whether it's at a church, sometimes they meet at someone's home through a Bible study. Um, sometimes you're able to find these sorts of groups uh, through those websites uh, in the local communities or elsewhere where people will advertise groups. Uh, there's also ways of connecting with individuals who have similar interests as you through various forums online, if you don't feel uh, comfortable meeting uh, people in person, but always do your research, check reviews on various groups before you join any, before you consult with people and definitely guard any of your uh, ideas that are in detail Guard those and don't be quick to talk about every detail related to an idea and don't be so quick to put them in a search engine or on one of these freebie uh, tools too that are out here. Instead, just use that piece of paper and pen old school style until God gives you all of the information that you need. And in this way, you can go full speed ahead and get all your proper licensing, trademarks, um, protected copyrights, all of that. Because unfortunately, there's just too many tools out there ripping people off of all of their good ideas. So I thank you as always for taking time out to listen. You've been listening to YouTube, Intimate Enterprise 7. Also, I have another channel if you want to see my face. I actually do some things to help individuals out when it comes to business tools and the AI that's out there, as well as uh, some of the services that I offer, just keeping you in the know of what's happening when it comes to getting these uh, dreams accomplished. So that's Resource Rundown. That's my YouTube channel. And uh, feel free to like, subscribe, comment, share on both of these platforms. Thank you so much and have a great rest of your day.